Cigarettes is our topic today. Or tonight, whenever you're watching this. Alright, <coughs> so civil rights after, well, at the turn of the 20th century. And when we talk about civil rights, civil rights isn't just uh, a certain racial group, but it's really the rights of any people. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the successes uh, and struggles of two main groups, namely women and African Americans. So women, as we have mentioned, have been fighting for the right to vote. They have a number of fairly vocal leaders and organizations. Massachusetts has a number of organizations, including the Boston Equal Suffrage Association for Good Government, uh, a nice long name, and they also have the College Equal Suffrage League. So there's a number of organizations that are fighting for this uh, right to vote to help women really have a voice in government. And one of the biggest uh, original pioneers of this was this woman on the left, who is Susan B. Anthony. Um, she, in the 1800s, is an outspoken critic and supporter of allowing women to vote. Later on, uh, in the early 1900s, we have this woman to the right. Her name is Carrie Chapman Catt. And she is the head of an organization called the National American Women Suffrage Association, the NAWSA. And for four years, she's working uh, to organize women. She wants to create ties with local uh, and national leaders. And they're really just trying to get a lot of support. So with uh, added support of normal people, then that is where uh, those making decisions can make changes. Um, they are also, under Carrie Chapman Catt, are pursuing very peaceful and respectful protest methods. There's certainly some women who are saying, we have waited long enough to vote, we are going to be heard, and they are setting fires and pursuing a more violent course of action. Uh, Kat is not in that uh, idea. She is more saying that we need to show ourselves as respectful and gracious people and appeal to people in that manner. <coughs> so they have a lot of protests. They protest in front of the White House. Uh, they're asking the president, at this time we have Woodrow Wilson, to give them this right to vote. <coughs> and uh, eventually, they get the right. Uh, 19th Amendment, it is passed in officially 1920. It's adopted. Uh, it's ratified in, or sorry, passed in 1919, it's ratified in 1920. And this is the wording here of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. So now, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, you have the ability to vote. Now, if you notice, this does not refer anything to race. That brings us to our second topic here, which is race relations. Um, so after the Civil War, there is uh, a lot of problems, as we mentioned last year, that African Americans are facing. There's the Jim Crow laws in the South, uh, which really enforces segregation. And a lot of the promises that these former slaves have been made, that their lives would be better, are not uh, seen through. And one of the uh, pioneers in really promoting the rights of African Americans is this man right here. His name is W.E.B. Du Bois. And he is demanding uh, full social and economic equality for African Americans. So he wants there to be no discrimination, uh, both socially and economically, so in the workplace and just living their lives. And he starts an organization called the NAACP, 
which stands for National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Um, and this organization is still around today. Uh, you will see it in the news if there's, if there's uh, something that comes up, especially when it comes to race. And while the women are gaining this now 19th Amendment, this spares a lot of people like um, Du Bois to say, all right, maybe there's going to be some changes that are made for African Americans. Sadly, that does not happen. Uh, Wilson, as we mentioned, he gets reelected during World War One. He promises in many cases to support a lot of uh, changes for African Americans, especially uh, laws against lynching. Lynching is when a mob of people come and kill someone and without due process. So these people are not put on trial, uh, or if it is, it's a sham, and they are killed, uh, sometimes hung, in many cases hung, but uh, killed by a mob of people. Um, however, while he's in office, Wilson does not uh, support anything federally going against lynching. He supports states' right to end it, but many states that this is happening are not willing to or desiring to end lynching. He also uh, has people in his cabinet. So the Secretary of Navy, uh, he is a fervent uh, racist and proposes that there should be separate facilities for drinking. And while the NAACP is saying, you can't have separate facilities, uh, in fact, we do. We have uh, things like this, white fountains and colored fountains. So African-Americans are Certainly, while they are better organized now, they have organizations, they're still seeing a great deal of discrimination. In some cases, it's getting worse as time is progressing. And that certainly does not make for uh, good relations, especially in the South. During the war, during World War I, there's what's known as the Great Migration. And this is a ever since the uh, end of the Civil War, it's a massive migration of hundreds of thousands of Southern blacks to cities in the North, particularly because uh, there's a big crop failure in the South, which means there isn't, namely most uh, African Americans are working on the fields. So since their work has now literally dried up um, or been eaten away by some sort of infestation, then they are out of work. So a lot move up to the cities, where during the war, there's certainly a lot of jobs in factories. Uh, the Henry Ford uh, company, so they're making here tractors. Um, there's also jobs for African-American women uh, in secretarial positions. As we mentioned in the war, since men are fighting overseas, there's a <coughs> great deal of jobs um, in manufacturing and in other businesses. So this contributes to a... Uh, what's known as the Great Migration. And certainly we're not saying just because they're moving north you have a better life for a lot of African Americans. In fact, since there's a lot of people in the north who perhaps are now seeing their uh, various jobs being taken by African Americans, there's, there's also, as we see even today, uh, this resentment of these uh, new group of people coming in. And <coughs> it's going to